for the rest of the podcast now. You're just going to do a high-pitched for anything I say. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. Here's a... <laughs> So, official starting word of any HTTP 2 or 3 episode, <laughs> I've been having a look through some of the TC39 proposals. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, and these are the ones which are kind of like stage 0, stage 1, like the really early stuff. OK. So I would like the, uh, the SERMA score for each of these things oh. that, uh, that what, I'm going to show you. What scale are we talking? Um, Minus 1, 0, 1? From interesting to interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I want. So. The first one I'm going to show you is this. This is promise.try. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so Initial my, verdict. So, OK, here's the thing. I'm going to try to figure out what it is in YouTube. OK, I'm right. all right. This is basically the reverse of a wait, where a wait turns a rejected promise into a throw, and this one turns a throw into a rejected promise. Um, it will do that, but also other things. Because if you do, OK, so let's take a look at this. Um, Mm -hmm. Which is that both of these things are doing almost exactly the same thing. OK. So, so in here, um, this is an async function. Mm -hmm. So I can write code in there. If it froze, it's going to return to a rejected promise. Mm -hmm. If I return a thing, it's going to you know, be packaged into a promise. And that's what p is going to be. It will be that return value. Um, the only difference between these two is this function here is queued on a microtask. And this one is not. Interesting. Yep, basically, th this is the implementation of try. Because a promise callback will run straight away. What's the difference of just an async ify? Async ify is exactly the same. So my verdict on promise.try? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I have needed this in the past, but I agree that uh, async ify is, uh, although it kind of looks a little bit ugly in code sometimes, I, mean, I agree. The, it's, the, it's the only thing that's nice about this is that ify's are always confusing because you see a function, and then at the end, something's like, oh, I'm invoking it. So this one would hide, would make it like, oh, obviously, I can see at the start you're invoking yes. it. Yes. And you know what? I, a bit off topic, but that's why I, I don't like APIs that have a callback first, then some extra stuff afterwards, oh. uh, like uh, add event listener, which Set has all of its. Set timeout as a perfect one because you're, you're scrolling down the page, like down this massive function. lines of callback and, code. Yeah, and then Four. just to find out <laughs> exactly. Or you're looking at this this you know event listener going, this doesn't really make sense, and you get to the bottom, it's like once true, like oh okay, now let's read all of that again. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, that's off topic. Next thing I want to talk about. Zero. That is probably stage zero or one. Like these are the <laughs> things I didn't commit to memory before <laughs> we sat down. Um, right, this. Oh, I know where this is going. I'm looking forward to that one. Oh, OK. So I think so, at least. But I'm going to, oh, Jake, where is this going? Top acting, sir. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what we're doing here is we're trying to get the value of data.photos.length. But oh, photos, JavaScript happens. Yeah, photos might be not a, an object. Like it could be a null or an undefined or something like that. So uh, da, 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 this yes. syntax. Yes. What do you call the coalescing null operator or something? Yes. Yes, or some reordering of those sounds <laughs> <laughs> into the correct thing. Uh, I think it is called that, actually. So yeah, what happens here is if it gets to photos, and photos is a null undefined, it just stops right there. And it's Interesting. It is exciting, I'm looking forward isn't it? to this so much, because um, every now and then, especially when you like take user data, like yeah. use, in user options object, and you have to check if it's actually there. And if so, if you want to inspect it, just like Write it down with a question mark, and it would look so much better. Exactly. There's another thing I want to point out here, and that's that I recently got a kitten. Uh, in case anyone's <laughs> wondering why my hands are shredded, that's why. Anyway, this works as well. Um, oh, yeah. At least it's, Same. It's, yeah, whatever. So just Same to be clear, like, if the, the thing that you question mark is mm. null, then the entire return value will be null. So yes. OK. Exactly. So val would, would be null in this example. Um, this works as well. Which I quite like. Ooh. Mm. I mean, the dot is a little bit confusing. It's I would have expected question mark parentheses. Yeah, I, I imagine that might be a clash of syntax, maybe with um, the ternary operator or something oh. like that. Oh, that's so annoying. Yeah. yeah, I can see that. So now there's a, a, a one character look ahead, well, you know, one non white space character look ahead to decide what to do. So yeah, but this is, this is saying if whatever is present, call it. Um, if not, 
okay. while it becomes known. So yeah. Cool. What, on the, what's the sermon score? Interesting. Interesting. I think so too, actually. I quite like that one. Right. Have you ever ended up with code like this before? Because you're, you want to create a constant, but computing that constant requires a bit of work. And technically, that's where you, you write a function. That's where you write a function. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so you, an answer here is to make a self, uh, an iffy, a self executing function that returns the thing. Um, brilliant. Great job done. Uh, the proposal is a do block. Oh, the do. How very functional of us. Exactly. So this is, this is the idea is that you could put this where you would put statements. So especially useful in things like JSX, uh, which is all very all statements. Mm -hmm. You can't put if state, ifs in there. But with a do, you would be able to put an if in. And the final uh, statement in the do is the value that's returned effectively. So what can you you can put any form of JavaScript code in the do or just a subset? Because I would have expected explicit returns in the do block. Uh, no, it's just the last statement. Uh, I actually made a mistake when I first wrote this code. I, I missed the else off uh, because I thought, oh, you know, I had the, because normally when I write code like this, I don't do, if I'm returning values, I don't yeah. do the else because eh, yeah. all the other codes ended. And I just had logged out. And I was like, oh, oh I'm so now breaking it. basically you write it. just code. And then the last, the return value of the last statement, and this is all one statement for the record, right? Yeah. This is one big well, it, if. Yeah, it's kind of essentially the last thing that's the, okay. that's executed. Mm. It's, it's kind of the thing that would appear in the console if you pasted this in. Interesting. So it, what? Interesting. Yes, it's it's nicer to read if you just say do. But then again, I think I would love do to just be a sugar of an ify, and you'd mm. be like, just let me do returns. Like, what if you want to do an early return? I right. do you know. What? I, I think you're right. I think uh, something that would be really nice here is a, an iffy syntax that was clear from the first few characters. Yeah, you see the start. The, the oh, end. this function is going to be invoked immediately. Or just just execute that block of code. It's allowed to return though. Would be nice. It's it's yeah. it's a problem worth looking at. Not sure I like this solution. All right. right well, point. that's that's Summers declared <laughs> that he hates <laughs> that idea and everyone involved. I'm not going to send no. this video to G39 after. <laughs> <laughs> So this one, we've seen this before, right? You've, you've, we've done examples like this. Uh, so we're saying, hello world, uh, or default, right? OK, it seems like we're going to something that has a lot of synergy with the question mark thing. Ah, it is. It is. Uh, so the problem here is if hello world is an empty string, and you actually wanted, you know, you're wanting to say, if or world null, exists. Or undefined, or zero. It, so this is the proposal. So what this means is use default if world is null or undefined. But not an empty string. Not oh, empty so this string, is the thing zero. where you run into the trap where you're doing the or to have a default value, but then you realize, oh, wait, 0 and empty string are actually considered false C, even though in this case, they are legit values for me. Yes, exactly. Interesting. 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 That's a vote. OK, OK, let's, let's keep going. Um, what does this do? Uh, it replaces the first plus. Ah. With an M with a space, and I've run into this so many times. And if you don't, if you want to replace all of them, you always have to go with a regexes. Exactly like that, and it's horrible, right? Because then so you end horrible. up, especially if you're doing things with slashes in already, you get all of the horrible escaping. It's nasty. The proposal is yes, replace all. Yes, interesting, good, do it, ship it. All right, excellent, brilliant. All right, moving on. Ooh. <laughs> oh, this is so Ruby. It is so Ruby. This is where this has come from. Uh, so what would, what would you assume this, this is? So there's two versions I could see. Either some function it takes a parameter and returns a function, and mm -hmm. that then gets invoked with this thing, or the, the block at the end just turns into the second parameter of some function. Second one, correct. Yes, Ooh. it is sugar for that. Ah, um, oh, the reactive people are going to love it. Right. And there's, there's some interesting kind of syntaxes you get with this. It's a lot of it's it's very very unidiomatic right now. I mean, it, it, yeah. if you put in the function in, into the language, it's by definition not really unidiomatic anymore. But right now, it feels very foreign. It's a, yeah, it does. It feels very foreign, and it, it's a lot. It's a new syntax for something that. How different really is that? What are we yeah. really gaining there? I think I would have to see it with like more chaining, mm. because for example, could I make some function, then return a new function that takes a function and then just chain these oh. blocks together? Oh, and wow. Is that something that we want to allow? Oh, yeah. I didn't even consider that. I wonder if, the, if that would be valid syntax. Ooh. 
um, worth looking into. I mean, it's it, I I mean I'm I'm a big fan of of functional programming in general. Watch my supercharged series coming up on functional JavaScript programming. Right. Okay. Next one. Um, it's the last one. Okay. Familiar with this syntax? It's an array. It's an array. Excellent. One point for Surma. One. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> you keep your job. Um, oh, ooh. Oh, last item. Uh, I remember being looped into a Twitter flame war around this. Oh, yeah. That because was... last item, I'm on board with. Yeah. That, because it's the, the only way to do it right now is array, angle brackets, and then in there, array, right. length, minus, minus one. one. Right. Which also, I think, is acts weird if the array is empty? Or does it just do undefined? Oh. Because then you would do array minus 1. You'd be on the minus 1 th I don't thing. even know right now. You know, then suddenly you have to think about these things. Holy arrays, So maybe. this would be well-defined. If it's empty, yes. it's probably going to be undefined or something. It's going to be well-defined. And it's a nice and easy to read way to get the last item. And I agree. I've wanted this all the time. And it's nice that it's also a setter, Ooh. which is great. So this is me making the array 1, 2, 4. Yeah. That's, that, that is nice. The, the thing that we had on Twitter was, well, then we should also have first item. Well, actually, the way it came to it is, is I, I saw someone going, I just, I'm just i really excited about first item. I didn't <laughs> mention last item. I was like, really? We have zero. zero. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> like, concise. It's actually geez, shorter. OK. Like, I, I understand the excitement for last item. Uh, and, the, and the proposal only mentions last item. It doesn't yeah. mention first item. So, uh, so yeah. OK, so uh, out, out of those, what's your favorite? What do we have? Um, I think it's coalescing null. I think oh, that has yeah. the biggest impact for me, M probably because I've been writing a lot of like user-facing slash library code recently. Yeah. So you always end up handling options, objects, and then this whole verification stuff just gets annoying. Yeah, and you can always pass something like this off to a function that gets yeah. the last item of an array. It's not amazingly pretty, but it does the job, whereas the null thing is really yeah. difficult to sort of libraryify, right? Yeah, like and then you have like, yeah. the, let's say, the functions, and you have to chain them. It gets weird. It so. gets weird. OK, yeah, that's all, that's all I had. We should so. talk about in like um, after the next GC39 meeting an update on did they move on or did not. Did they move? There's actually loads more proposals. So if I once again can't think of a code episode to do, <laughs> we're going to go through some more. I and like we're it. Go and I'm sure there'll be more uh, proposals by then. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep doing this as a kind of as right. a regular thing. Until then. Until then. I treated my, myself to a massage. A massage? A massage. Is um, it massage or massage? I don't know. I don't know. I'm still confused. Massage. A massage. A massage. A massager. Yeah. A massager.